We have already talked a lot about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset in our previous video right after launch. Now the chip has finally come to our office inside the Motorola X30, so we're gonna find out whether the new chip can rebuild the reputation of the Snapdragon flagship series. We will try to test the chip by putting it through a number of benchmark tests starting with Geekbench 5. After checking the results of the Geekbench 5 CPU test, you would find that there is almost no performance improvement compared to the AAA chipset. We got a score of 1200 for the single core test and 37 for the multi-core test at a temperature of 10 degrees. While at 20 degrees, the multi-core test result came down to 3500. It seems that the CPU performance might easily be influenced by the temperature. But at the same time, note that the Geekbench 5 may not have got an update to adopt to the new chipset. So, considering the software developed by the Motorola is still an early version, the result might not be accurately reflect the improvement of HN1's performance. Then we tested it again on N22 benchmark. The overall score doesn't exceed 1 million as we saw in leaked screenshots, but remains around 9,800,000. And there's a little gap between these two chips CPU results. And surprisingly, the old AAA chip sometimes could achieve a better multi-core performance in the benchmark. Also, we learned that the result could be better if you find a way to get a lower testing temperature, like putting it in the fridge. Though it sounds a little bit funny. If there is no significant improvement over the CPU performance, how about its power consumption running the benchmark? We all know that the AAA chip doesn't have a good power efficiency on most Android flagship models, and the new 8 Gen 1 chip was even likely to be worse. At least for now, the power output when running the Geekbench 5 is even higher than what we got on the Snapdragon 888 platform. On an average, it went up to 10.5 watts for multi-core test and 4 watts for single core test. No wonder we felt that the battery was dropping so quickly during all our tests. The first surprise from this chipset came in the 3D Mark GPU test. We ran it at various temperatures and then tried to figure out how much of an impact was caused by the temperature factor. At 5 degrees room temperature, the Edge X30 can run up to 99 hundredths in the first round of the test, which has exceeded the average score of the latest Apple's A15 chipset running in the iPhone 13 Pro, which is almost 70% better than most phones powered by the AAA chipset. And then we brought it to the 50 degrees room temperature. The result was down to 97 hundredths. At 25 degrees, we ran three more rounds and the score went down to 89 hundredths. It seems that the 8 Gen 1 is pretty sensitive to temperature and in daily use, the peak performance probably will be hard to sustain for a long time gaming or the chip might throttle down to due to the heating issue. However, we are still pretty surprised by its GPU improvement from the AAA chipset. Even when we met the heating issue, the 3D Mark results still got 50% increase. And let's do another GPU test in GFX Bench. The result also proved the significant improvement of the new chip's GPU. No matter for OpenGL or Vulkan test, the 8 Gen 1 has performed closed to what we tested on iPhone 13 Pro and ran with 60% improvement from the Snapdragon 888 of the Mi 11. Now let's test its gaming performance. It's too easy for this chip to run games like PUBG Mobile and there is no perceivable heating being detected. But what about the heavy games? We round Genshin Impact under the highest graphics at 20 degrees. The result is not bad and the gaming experience got slightly improved with pretty high frame rate at first 15 minutes. But since the game hasn't unlocked the 60 frame per second limit, CPU loading only remained around 30% and we were probably not able to access the peak performance of the chipset. 
However, we still encounter the similar throttling issue found on all the Triple Eight chipset phones due to high temperature and high power consumption. The X3 large core slowed down and the frame rate fluctuated, eventually stabling down to 54.4 frames per second on an average. Further, we ran the game again to reveal its power performance efficiency compared to the Mi 11 running the Triple Eight chipset. We switched the frame rate locked down to 30 frames per second on both models and tried to simulate an average loading for most Android games. Under such a situation, the power efficiency of the HN1's result of 4.9 watt didn't get much better than the AAA chipset, so it looks like gamers may still need to bear the high power consumption. And the surface of the phone also got heated up quickly when running these heavy games. During the 30 minutes game testing, the maximum surface temperature went up to somewhere around 53 degrees, so its power and heating performance may still be an issue for gaming, just like the Triple H have said. In another game, Nemium Legends, to give it the hardest performance test, we upgraded the gaming resolution to a 2K level with the highest graphics. In the first 5 minutes, the Edge X30 powered by the HN1 did deliver the excellent peak performance as we got in the GPU benchmark, but it didn't last long and got throttled down for the rest of the time thanks to the heating issue. The highest temperature hit at 57 degrees and the detected chip temperature went up to around 90 degrees, which is really insane. And the peak power even reached 14.1 watt, which is also the highest figure that we have tested over a phone's power output. Eventually, the 30 minute test consumed around 30% of the power. And at the same time, one positive thing to note here is that the throttle performance is still at the level that is close to the Mi 11's peak performance. To prove this finding, we also performed a comparison of the 3D Mark 4K wildlife stress test. We found that Mi 11 is better at maintaining a stable but lower frame rate throughout the 20 loops, which protected the phone from getting overheated, avoiding fast battery drain. While on the Edge X30, it started with an excellent result, but the performance throttled down with each round. However, just like we found in our gaming test, the new Snapdragon chip's lowest score in the last loop is still much better than the Mi 11's result of the first loop. Also, the X30 surface was extremely hot, around 54 degrees, and it consumed nearly twice as much power as the Mi 11. The Edge X30 features a 5000 million per hour battery and 68 fast charge. For its battery life, the phone didn't perform well with the chipset. Here are the results of our battery test and charging test. You can check it out here. After all the tasks we performed, we hope you've got an idea of how exactly the A Gen 1 chip performs. But at the same time, I also want to tell you another important fact about these two chipsets. After months of optimization, most flagships powered by the Snapdragon 888 chip have used a conservative CPU strategy. On the other hand, being a very early model featuring the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to avoid overheating and to seek a balance with battery life, the Edge X30 has still got a lot of work to do with its software optimization. We do have to add that it achieved better peak performance due to the much better GPU. If you could effectively cool it down, the excellent performance can likely to last for much longer. To conclude, the good message here is that the new Snapdragon 8 chip brings an astounding GPU performance upgrade, which even catches up with Apple's latest A15 chip. As for actual gaming, the 6MB L3 cache also provides better support to access a smoother experience in heavy games like Genshin Impact. But the bad news is that the improvement of CPU is not significant at all. And power consumption and heating are still the main issues that brands are left to deal with. And they haven't really improved when comparing to the AAA chip. So that's it for today. We hope our performance review has given you a good overview of what to expect from the new Snapdragon chipset. We had a lot of fun testing the phone and the chipset and 
If you enjoy the process as well, you can stick more often to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one.